Welcome back to Mostly True Psychiatry with Dr. Mellon. We're still on our tour de force for diagnosis of schizophrenia for the symptoms. So I'm hitting the last ones this, this video. We're going to talk about disorganized speech, grossly disorganized behavior, and then catatonia. So disorganized speech, um, depending on how, you, how it's talked about, sometimes people just think of it as a formal thought disorder. Um, it's really a we know it when we see it kind of thing. Um, the kind of things that are commonly associated with it are like derailment, loose association, clang associations, word salad being a big one too, like the person's just so disorganized they can't speak properly. What makes that kind of damning and difficult to go through the DSM, it's like eight commonly identified thought process disorders. No word, dis no word salad there. Um, so don't take the DSM too seriously on this kind of section. Um, they're they're hard to follow, right? They're 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 the way that they're talking is difficult, and they're not manic. They're not high on drugs. It's it's like their thoughts are really kind of disorganized, and they're not making sense as they go through the process. And you're like trying to figure out what they're saying, and you just sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, and that's okay. And there's a grossly disorganized behavior, which is more you know it when you see it. It doesn't really have a specific meaning. Um, this gets confusing really because it's like it's disorganized behavior so that let's see that's like if we go back to the other diagnosis oh wait sorry it's right there if we go back to the negative symptoms um you know grossly disorganized behavior is that self-neglect like they're not doing anything is it impoverishment of thought really they're just not thinking so nothing's happening a volition right you know um it gets it gets a little shady on actually knowing what that means um it could be like some of the catatonic stuff like mannerisms where they're kind of just doing something over and over they're repeating something so it's just their behavior and speech is hard to follow it doesn't make sense a lot of times and that really comes with just generalized brain dysfunction and um, with moderate like real um, schizophrenia so catatonia is um, I'm just going to talk about it as the specifier um, for schizophrenia. It's part of bipolar depression and other things. But um, so the diagnostics of it are basically it's based on a symptom list from the DSM. It's kind of how we're, we're supposed to use it. It's it's a lot of terms. Um, you're just looking for three or three of them at least. The general patterns you're looking for somebody who's not moving not reacting like they're kind of interacting and talking the days before and then they, it's less and less talking and interacting and then they're just laying in bed and they're not moving they're not talking they're not responding you can manipulate them and push them around and they're just they're not interacting anymore that's kind of one version then there's the really excitability one who's really agitated and they're confused and this was not happening the days before and again not mania they're not it's not drugs it's just like they're just doing opposites of what you're saying like a little like a two-year-old would do kind of thing except for they're an adult where they're just antagonistic automatically um they're just like grimacing maybe they're doing weird pat posturing moving over and over um the terms you're supposed to learn for the dsm thing you have catalepsy rigid and a lot of these kind of overlap and they're messy so just take it for what it is rigidly remaining in an immobile p posture the posture is held for a long time despite the awkwardness or you know you should be tired so they're just in the position and they don't let go, um, which is going to be a little different than waxy flexibility and posturing is the idea. So a spontaneous, they do it. Um, active maintenance against gravity. It's posturing. They literally just think of like striking a posture. Waxy flexibility is the one that's super famous. Everybody knows. You push them into a position. They just hold it. They don't let go, even though it's, it's with the cat. So pretty much they have waxy flexibility. You just put posturing waxy flexibility or something, and bam, you're done. You got your catatonia. They do weird speech stuff. So you could have like echolalia, more involuntary mimicking. So they're just repeating, you know, what you say. Um, they can copy behavior. So physical movements. It's exopraxia, praxia movement, another person's movements. Um, mannerisms this is gets a little garbled to me i think this is semantics odd circumstantial characters of normal purposeful things so like saluting over and over you know they're marching they're praying or whatever um <coughs> sorry and then you have like stereotypy which is repetitive ritualistic um, motion so they're supposed to be more complicated i guess i don't know it's this is really garbage i think if you put mannerism put stereotypy move on 
um, non-goal-directed movement. Because remember, if you're writing these things down, you're saying catatonia, you're probably treating them for catatonia. So this almost think of this as like, I need to give them the treatment, I want to see if it helps, I need to give them the diagnostics. Negativism, um, it's opposition in response to external instructions. So, you know, right, this... So negativism, like oppositional stuff, pretty much comes along with the um, agitation, grimacing. It's just, you know, it, it just goes together. This is by no means like the only way this is looked at. This is just what the DSM does. There's other other words and terms used. And um, Let's go for treatment. But you should use the DSM one because you're a psychiatrist, you're not a neurologist. Um, the reason you're giving them a diagnosis of catatonia is because they need help. Things got a lot worse all of a sudden. Um, it's a weird thing that happens with schizophrenia. It's going to come and go probably a couple times throughout their life. Um, it's pretty severe when it happens. It could last months. It can be really hard to get them out, out of it or, you know, weeks or months. Um, cause they can starve themselves and stuff. I mean, it can become that, so you could say it's in self neglect, right? And that would cover it already. So maybe they have self neglect. You just give them the same treatment, right? It's all messy. Um, it's pretty fake to some degree, but um, on, on why you're diagnosing a certain way, because you're just trying to give them the treatment. That's why you're doing it. So 70 to 80% are going to prove with lorazepam. So um, basically, um, you're treating a person with catatonia. If it's chronic negative symptoms, self-neglect, and probably you're going to have a hard time um, treating them. That's basically, you might have to go through step one, two, three to get there. Um, Treatments, um, you should always stop your antipsychotics as part of that because um, see if that's part of the problem, right? Did you did it lock them up? Did it start to become too much? Their liver mess up or something? Treatment of cat catatonia atonia is um, you're going to give, your preference is you're going to go IV, then you go IM, and then oral. You're going to be giving a challenge dose of lorazepam two milligrams. And it basically, if they get better, it's diagnostic. And you're going to keep going up and up and up. So... If you gave 24 milligrams in, in 24 hours, that's totally fine. You just keep giving it. It might do this for days and days and a week or two weeks, and you slowly wean down. That's fine. If they're moving around by just giving them out of van all day for three, four, five, six days, go for it. Um, so lorazepam should be your choice. Um, and But if you're giving it for days, you're basically going ahead and starting um, step two, which is you're concurrently getting them lined up for another hospital or if your hospital does ECT. Um, because it often will have to be done. It takes at least six treatments usually. So if you did, um, depending on the location, two or three a week, right, it's going to be two or three weeks to get them of, of that treatment. Um, they should get a lot better after a few treatments. <coughs> after, you know, a week they'll be a lot better, but they're going to keep doing it because they, you, it's, you, that's kind of where it's seen as to sustain remission. So we've had a patient here recently was – you know, once every year or two kind of happens, gets gets a bunch of ECT um, pretty much every time and is fine again for bouncing around, happy, talking, not making any sense um, for another year, right? So it just some of them, it's just part of the process. So, you're pr so, remember, so remember, you're just, you're only thinking about catatonia because you're wanting the treatment. If you're not wanting to start benzos and stuff on them, don't, don't chase that. So, all right, I think that's finally all the um, diagnostic stuff for schizophrenia. So um, probably just go ahead and start getting into how you treat it on the next set of videos. If you've got any questions, comments, um, let me know down below. I'll check them. All right, it's been Leslie True Psychiatry, Dr. Mellon. Cheers.